that was all the things I was going to cover. Um, so who wants to come and try out some stuff, or do you guys have any questions? I have just a question about the logistics of when you get your um, sterlant in, and I'm thinking for Xenac and autobiotics, so are you spraying or soaking that whole bottle in every week? We, we spray in the bottle every week, so we would fill okay. the bottle uh, with sterilant and then spray it off into the port, bring it into the ice later. Um, I was over at Germantown and I think, I, I think they were using water there to do the wipe out. In so. Germantown, they use water from the water flask. Yes, I think, yeah, is it just that you you know, is that leave the water there and then they're pouring some out to wipe it out or... Mm -hmm. They would have um, yeah. extra French packs of water in the isolator and they could, you know, wet some on a paper towel and use that to clean out the cages. Has anyone looked at the comparison of the health of the animals versus high high or more frequent exposure to the aerosolized chemical sterilants versus just the water? Okay. There's no ill effects that we can see as far as reduced litter size, but mostly what we're working with here is transgenics or custom generated models, so the, the background info might not all be there. The amount that's used is so small, you know, and, and an isolator will, you have 15 to 20 air changes per hour, mm -hmm. and here it's, it's considerably higher, so it really isn't a consideration. You know, it, it's gone very, very rapidly. The inside is sterile. Yes. You sterilize it. Why are you then bringing in more sterilant and spraying it? We use the sterilant to wipe out the inside of the cages. Um, okay. We have projects in this building that aren't necessarily germ-free, um, so we want to reduce some, any burden that's in the cages. Uh, it's also good to use. Um, it's got you know kind of a soapy quality to it to kind of uh, help, you find, help find any pinholes. Yep. Um, in the germ-free isolator, I believe they're just using water, so they'll just go around and carefully in inspect the isolator for holes as opposed to spraying it. Have you ever thought of some sort of leak test with the gloves, such as submerging it in water to see, you know, yep. pushing air, and then if, if there's any bubbles, you'll see a... Yep, um, Frank's going to demonstrate leak testing at the okay. end uh, when he goes through the sterilizing, oh, okay. sterilization setup as well. Uh, there's a few different tests you can uh, do to, to check for leaks in the isolator. You can also, um, depending on the location of the hole, when you walk by the isolator, you might be able to hear it almost, a little whistling. Um, it's loud in this building with all of them hooked up and with a blower right here, but um, we have them on house air. It's a little uh, quieter. You can either run your hand over it and feel or even hear the whistling. Um, one other thing I wanted to show, these are the swabs that Dr. Roche was talking about that we use. It's the, the cotton tip with the wooden applicator. So when we initially set up our isolator, uh, we fog the whole thing with Clydox. We let it sit, we let it dry out, and then we'll take these swabs and swab essentially every area in the isolator we can reach. Um, definitely the ceiling, the floor, inside a cage, underneath a cage, underneath a shelf, um, the filter caps. Um, you can see like around this, the glove ring, uh, the inside of the glove, the sleeve of the front near the port door, and then we incubate these. Um, and in, in this building, we don't speciate, we just use yes or no, but for the germ-free, if they did have any growth, they would speciate and, and try to find out what it is. And they would do this, you know, three weeks, get a negative result all three weeks before they would release it for use. Fine. Always done the swabs, or do you also use the same gauze pads or anything else? We've typically used the swabs. You find the swabs effective? Yep, and they're easy to use. They're easy to uh, hold on to with the thick gloves on. Yeah. Um, we do the two swabs independently, the same types of areas. So we'll do two different cages, the floor, uh, two different spots in the, on the ceiling. But we do incubate them together in broth and an incubator. Are those vials that you're using not inflammable? These are, yeah. Do you have the... Um the specs on those because they were hard to find i've not yet been able to find them i don't but i i can get them for you thank you when you put swabs in do they do you put them in the small little test tubes like that or do you have 
maybe a larger container that you put it like you know 20 in at a time or just put in enough to do your daily your weekly tests they do they come in bulk and then we divvy them up into two because we need two sets of samples uh, for each isolator so they would they would go in in this yep yep what kind of time should you allow for the sterling I know she mentioned you know make sure the sterling doesn't get on the swab so do you let it dry efficiently before you actually do your swabbing or how's that work yep I believe in the setup is what Four hours, Frank, a minimum dry time? Yes. Okay. Yep, at least four hours, usually overnight. Gotcha. Uh, clean up before they. You want the inside to be completely dry so there's no wet sterilant left inside? Gotcha. Yeah, mm -hmm. around the vial. It may make a difference too whether or not you, how much you spray, right. what particular product you're using, but then if you're using the atomizer, it, it's all going to be a little bit different. So definitely overnight is, is, right. is probably the best, yeah. Any other questions? Question: Do you just yeah. mainly use uh, irradiated materials uh, in all your isolators, or just certain ones? In other isolators, you may autoclave things. It really depends on the supply. Um, we prefer to autoclave as much as possible, uh, and in germ-free, that's pretty much exclusively they'll use uh, autoclaved. Uh, the germ-free shippers are irradiated, and sometimes the feed might be irradiated. Um, so it really depends on the purpose of your isolator and um, what health status the animals need to be maintained at. I mean, all these supplies here are, they're irradiated and you're spraying them in, but other isolators you, you haven't, they're not in individual packages, or you ought to put the individual packages, or? In cases like this, these are individually um, autoclaved right. in the breather bags. Um, the bedding is irradiated and the valves for the hydropack are irradiated. Um, the water that we use here, if you're going to use hydropack, the bags are individually sprayed. The water inside is sterile filtered. Um, same if you're using, you would autoclave this bottle and then spray it in. But the bedding generally is all irradiated and the food as well. You don't irradiated autoclave that. Irradiated and irradiated. Yep, and then okay. it'll be sprayed in. Yep. There's no isolators anywhere that you autoclave the food and bedding. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Um, we have. If you're using autoclave feed, we've autoclaved it in the just a micro isolator cage like this. Um, if you're using a germ-free isolator and you have a, a cylinder port, you can autoclave your feed right in the cylinder. It would be packaged in a like a brown paper bag within the cylinder, autoclaved and then and put in the isolator. Um, what's important about the feed, if you're going to use irradiated, is to make sure you get the the right dose of irradiation. Right. Um, it's kind of a blend of high enough to kill everything, but not destroy the nutritional content of the feed. Um, so you said it was the bedding that was in the micro isolator, or that's feed. Okay. Um, we can also. This one has a little bit of a clear lid. Okay. You can see but this again in, in a, a cage. cage that's been autoclaved. Or again, you could um, put your bedding from your if you're getting it in bulk into a, a paper bag, similar to the type we use for garbage, maybe a little bit bigger, seal it up, autoclave that, either individually or in your cylinder. Or even um, in a breather bag, if you got a, a large enough one. We went to the, um, the nest pack bedding and the hydro pack just for efficiency. It's pre-measured amount of bedding. Every cage is getting the same amount. You just drop it in. They have some nesting material as well. And, I presume you're also testing on the quality of the water that's coming in those packages to see By sure batch, yeah. That yep. it's actually sterile. Yep, so the HydroPack machine, like all our equipment, is validated about once a year. And then there's periodic batch testing. So the, the HydroPack is actually in the facility? We have a HydroPack machine uh, I didn't realize you here. were actually producing them here, I think. Okay. Yep. Um, the validation methods for your water in the flasks? What are in the, our, we validate our autoclaves once a year, so we have a cycle time um, specific for a water run. And then we use the autoclave tape, and in some areas of the farm, in every load, they'll have a, a sacrificial bottle that will have one of the verified or spore strips in it, and then they'll test it, and they won't release anything from that load until the batch has been cleared in the QC lab. Somebody asked during the presentation about the, the capacity of the hydro pack versus a water bottle. Yep. What does it compare to in size? So this, um, 
we'll put on, this will last, a, a, we have a five per cage max. Um, this will last five per cage a week. One week. Um, not, do you know the exact volume in the bag, Frank? Under 15 ounces. 15 ounces. Okay. Um, the nice thing about the Hydro Pack is you can let it go down um, pretty low before you have to change it out. If you have, you know, uh, a breeding trio and two moms with litters, you might find yourself changing it at four or five days, but for the most part, this will last a full week. A um, little bit of training involved to get them to be able to apply correctly without popping or leaking, but once you know how to do it, as they say, it's all on the wrist. Um, very good success um, with getting them on without leaking or, or spilling or anything like that. Yeah. Um, when they come in, if, if they've come from another facility, we'll put some of the hydrogel that they're usually transported with in the bottom of the cage for the first day or two, but they seem to they go right to over do. to it. Yep. Um, sometimes the rats will chew on the valve, but the bag still operates uh, just fine. So the, the tips are radiated, but are they physically able to be called also autoclaved? Do you know? These tips can't be autoclaved for the hydropack, I don't believe. Okay. Do they come already irradiated from hydropack? Yeah, we purchased them, yep. They, okay. So I, I think that would sure be another thing you would have to send out for an extra dose. I'm not, I'm not sure maybe, what the maybe dose not. is. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. But they would certainly be able to answer that. Yep. I was just curious, in the, in the initial set of, of the isolators, do you transport each cage, each clean cage into the isolator, similar to what you've already shown us? Or yeah, what they'll, what they'll do when they reprocess the isolator, they'll take the front off and, and inspect it, check the filters, right. they'll set up all these cages and feeders before they do the cold sterilization. So it's already in place. So gotcha. It's gotcha. Not one at a time. Gotcha. Um, if we had to add additional cages, that would be one at a time spray through. They the put port. them in wrap, though. Are they? When we know. put them in, no. No, so that they haven't been autoclaved. They were. They get cleaned. Uh, then they would be autoclaved. Then they would go in. Um, okay. But they're not autoclaved individually. Okay. Or wrapped individually, and okay. then the cold sterile. And then with a German free shipper. The germ free ship were going on the end and then you would transport those animals into those cages or? Yep. Gotcha. Yep. Are you using an additional glove set when you're handling the rats so that you're protecting those gloves more? Or are you yeah, if we were uh, had animals in here, we have like a canvas glove that gets autoclaved that they'll wear on top of the, uh, the glove and the isolator to help protect from bites. Um, we also have um, more for the mice, but forceps to handle the mice with some of the rats. So they, they do pick up, but they always have the canvas glove on. So whenever we're working an isolator, we need to have long sleeves and a pair of nitrile or latex gloves um, on to prevent and try to reduce skin cells. Um, also help getting things in and out, but we do have um, the cotton, the glove liners available. Some people, if they're sensitive to the gloves or with the perspiration, it can be helpful. But yeah, that's a good tip.